are insane. Hello and welcome to the <laughs> Madhouse. Episode 115. This Kim is the ultimate spy, the host of this podcast. And joining me for this episode, I have Stephen Kavakovich, also known as Steve Kavak. I exist in this world. And um, I, I, I think I'm the craziest one here, probably. <laughs> yeah, no. Keep telling yourself that. <laughs> yeah. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> um, hey, big down guy here. I know I normally save for the best or last, but okay, this is gonna hey. work. Hi, I exist. Also, I'm Lucas. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so this episode, we're gonna talk about the sequel trilogy because this is the last episode in the, I guess, arc, like I guess, trilogy of podcasters movies, like everything great about them because they get so much hate. And so here are here we are, the last stretch. Um basically, but we can't speculate it when we get to that point just because obviously we we can only talk about what we think is gonna happen. But um thoughts on episode seven. So I think we were all there when we heard the news that um they were making another episode, another movie. Oh yeah. For the first <laughs> I was just been like, what the hell? That um, was my day. So I, I did not I didn't know what they were gonna do with it. Turns out it was like gonna, gonna be like a thirty year gap and they were gonna bring all the actors back from the original movies. That was tight. There was a lot of problems that I had with the movie. I wanna be positive here, but at the same time I the only issues I really had with it because I had my review of it, uh, right when it was actually was. Um, but my only real problem with it, trying to be positive here again, was the time gap. So it's like they go from episode six, they won the battle, you know, everything's good, the empire's destroyed, and then 30 days later, there's a new empire called the First Order the thing, and uh, the rebels are now the resistance, and it's like, what the hell happened? <laughs> and well, I mean, that's the only thing I. Well, had. in that regard, I actually got to disagree with you there. Uh, I actually got to really disagree there. Because oh, yeah? one of the overarching themes of the entire, well, it's hmm. it's story of good and evil. Yes, it's a space western, but at its core, it's right. also a story of good and evil. And no no matter what yeah. fairy tale that you're talking about, whether it's older, fictional, whatever, evil is always going <laughs> to quote Darth Dark Helmet, evil will always triumph <laughs> because good is dumb. Uh, <laughs> but seriously, I mean it, it makes sense because evil is always gonna have yeah. its its interpretations in hearts and minds. And there's always going to be some sort of survival. So I don't mind at all that they brought it back in some capacity. Yeah. I actually enjoy, to me, one of the biggest impacts and one of the reasons mm -hmm. why I enjoy it so much be is because it is, in fact, a continuation of the Empire. It's not different. Yeah, it's it's a little like, tweaked, yeah. yes, but it is the exact same Empire. It's still <laughs> the legacy of Palpatine. It's still the legacy of Vader, just with a different yeah. face. It's, That's it's it. Kinda like, it's kind of like... Um... In yeah. the real world, you know, after the fall of the Soviet mm -hmm, exactly. Union came, came Russia, yeah. modern Russia. You know, it's yeah. very mm -hmm. similar to the previous regime, uh, just with a different... Or just like a World War One, then World War Two. I mean, it was a yeah. continuation of the same thing. Same thing with Iraq same th and uh, Saudi Arabia. Cause it, I mean, literally, it was supposed to be a second Gulf yeah. War, at least in the minds of the people that attacked with, um, when we went back and invaded. So, yeah, it, it, to me, it actually makes more sense than anything else. Yeah, exactly. That's a good way to put it. The only uh, gap in time people are actually, I guess, to, like, understand what happened. I mean, I never played the, this this Lego game that came out a while back. It was basically a time, like, supposed to fill the gap in. Otherwise, either the comics or the, the novelizations for the EU, whatever you call it. Um, and I never read those. So, like, when I when it's, like, coming back, I mean, everyone was nostalgic about seeing that first trailer and seeing a Chewy, we're home. Everyone just, like, was, yay, they're back. <laughs> I mean, that was a great line. Like, that really made me go, yay. I mean, I didn't have any real issues with, with Force Awakens at all, besides just the, the confusing time gap, and I didn't really get what was happening. It awakened the Force But it was very, very, uh, very interesting. And, you know, Finn... And then uh, Poe, those characters, I just really the trilogy, and they've been, they've been fantastic. Kylo Ren has been really interesting, you know, especially when you take the new trilogy, the whole canon thing. I mean, we'll get to that later if we have time, the whole canon thing. I really hate it. And if I remember right, um, Hotline and the Expanded Material originally, Some, I believe they have three kids. They have three kids, and two of which yeah. were twins. 
yeah, a yeah. boy and a girl. The guy, uh, the twins, became well, basically yeah, Kylo right. Ren. Um, basically, I, I'm I'm using kind of a stretch there, yeah, exactly. but that's where Kylo Ren kind of comes in. But they were in fact twins in that regard. Um, mm-hmm. But they did have three kids, and I forget if yeah. um, if Luke had any kids or not. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't read them all, so I don't know. I mean, either. I mean, I just I just know that that there was, there's a lot of like, especially with that Lego game they made. Uh, it was I think it specifically starts with Episode Six ending, and then it, like told you the story. I'd never played it, so I don't really know. I think was I think also they're making that mandalorian series which is going to help kind of get more clear about what happened between those we'll get to that later if we have time again so i really i really thought that uh they really did a good job with force awakens in terms yeah, of yeah yeah the soft reboot in a way i mean it wasn't really a reboot but it felt like that because we hadn't been to the uh galaxy in forever and nice in film and so it was character especially um you know seeing han again seeing leia again leia oh my god that was an amazing <laughs> experience to see her you know what what her fate was at the end of episode six. So that, we didn't really have any answer to that, really. Um, but still, really didn't understand, unless you really read the books, is C-3PO's red arm. I don't understand that. Like, well, <laughs> the one that happened there. Yeah, what well, the red I don't arm? know what the canon reason was, but I do know the reason why in real life. Anthony Daniels, the guy that plays C-3PO, and every single interpretation and all the other movies that have come before it where C-3PO makes an appearance, he always has a mismatched arm. And his requirement uh, when he f- signed on to do the new one, he's got to keep having that mismatched arm. That was his requirement with J.J. Abrams. So that's the reason why. And canon, I have no fucking clue. Uh, huh. That's odd. You may not remember me because of the red arm. It's like, <laughs> it's like, come on. But Every I mean, single you, movie, you know, man, watch them. The game was fantastic, but single film, even the even the um, little standalone films that they had. But at the same time, there was a lot of plot points that didn't make any sense. Fun movie. It really um, takes this back to the to the universe and really shows us what um, Star Wars was. Seeing the Millennium Falcon again, although it does call, it did call back to Episode Four definitely, especially when Luke's. It's like he's saying, not that one. That's garbage. It's like, well, it's <laughs> kind of accurate because you know that was basically what I thought uh, Force Awakens did right with uh, kind of calling back to episode four. A lot wrong with it. I just didn't quite follow what was going on in the whole story in that time gap. I mean, that's literally it. I I love to do some of the new troopers. Everything about it was designed amazingly. Oh, yeah. And especially Kylo Ren's force ability, like being able to stop saying, <laughs> and then like, keeping it in the air, like what the hell was that about? Like that's crazy. But at the same time, that was a really cool. Okay, because this this whole podcast was supposed to be good, talking about good things mm-hmm. with the Star Wars new trilogy. I gotta say it, I fucking love the way that they handle the stormtroopers in this new one. They oh, felt cool. like an imposing force with it. The first order stormtroopers. Or absolutely amazing. Probably my favorite part of it entirely. Mm-hmm. Is fucking on point. I'm just gonna say that right now. I what was that? The armor redesign. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I was... Oh yeah. That, that was a really good. I, I actually, I, I do. I do prefer the, the original. It was a very interesting approach to the to the design because yeah, a, you know really, because again with an it's a really cool because they've had it's a really cool combination. Of um, the old like 1970s, yeah, 1980s stormtrooper styling, and like a modern, it's like a modernized stormtrooper. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it shows exactly because because kind of especially when they sort of clone troopers, it shows that time has progressed at least a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like it shows that mm-hmm. things have changed. Oh yeah, definitely. Of course, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, especially since they started. Started as clones and the design of the helm changed yeah. as time went on. And I just love the I don't know of it as well. We, we might want to uh, real quick. Should I real quick mention this before we get to episode nine speculation? Um, episode nine, they just revealed a Sith trooper, which is basically a red version of the same trooper. Huh. 
I don't know if we should talk about this real quick or wait till. Why don't we wait till later? But that's interesting. Later. Yeah, you know, wait till we get to the movie. Then let's talk about okay. it. Yeah, I figure. I figure. I just wanted to bring up they they did announce a new trooper for the new episode. But I'm yeah. staying away from all goddamn. Really have that movie. To... Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, well, there wasn't really a spoiler. I just. <laughs> I know. Just I'm just making a new, new trooper. They have. Okay. 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 Anyway, but yeah. Um. The Force Awakens. What's interesting, actually, real quick, what's interesting about about this new? I wasn't a big fan of the way they marketed it. I mean, that's just because I I was so used to the, grew up on the uh, the prequels, the way they marketed it as episode, and then suddenly it's like Force Awakens. It's supposed to be with episode seven, The Force Awakens. It's like, oh no 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 no, they just have it marked. It's just the way they market it. Don't worry, it's, it's opening call. Like, okay, always are always uh, deliberate on that. Of uh, of obviously they don't never actually know the title of it until later then they you know fix it just calling it star wars whatever and my goodness that opening crawl still remains the best part of star wars oh like, god you know, yeah imagine going to a theater so the um battle episode in this new trilogy and especially with the first two in this new trilogy you know with the way the fans reacted at the opening logo like it's like you should hear the videos of people reacting to this like that Opening crawls of, of these new episodes. They just go crazy. It's like, oh my god. Yeah, I'll never forget when <laughs> I first saw The Force Awakens and um, when the f- yeah. opening crawl came on, the entire crowd was just like, Ooh! Oh god, yeah. <laughs> like, however, so still, no matter how many yeah, times yeah. I see, I love- no matter how many times I see the opening crawl in theaters, yeah. as soon as the yeah. sounds, I always jump every damn time. And it's yeah, one of yeah, it's yeah, one of my yeah, most it's my favorite part of seeing Star Wars movies, just because I'm like, okay, okay, oh, yes, fuck yeah. One of the reasons why I hate the spinoff. Like, um, well, well, one of the things about the spinoff yeah, movies for Star yeah. Wars is I hated that they didn't have an open crawl. I mean, it makes sense, but still, I I, I miss that. Um, just give me my crawl, man. Come on, please. <laughs> what, what do you What do you mean the the spinoff? The spinoffs of the middle movies, like a Rogue One and um, oh, 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 and Solo, they didn't have yeah, opening crawls. I don't know. Um, I, I, they had their own little. They had their own little thing. Like, like I know that Solo had like literally exactly, had a logo but they didn't have an opening story. crawl. But I get what you're saying. That's, and I missed that. Well, I, I think mean, they were. Yeah, I think they, they, they had a. Room. They have, yeah, they have a reason for that. Skywalker saga, but it, it does take place in that. Saga, it's just not part of the main franchise. Um, so they probably it's probably they, why they don't do. Yeah, that's that's why that's that why they say that they don't do it. But yeah. still, man, it just it feels official. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's yeah. I agree. I will say that um that the, with Force Awakens, there was a lot of comedy. You know, especially I don't know if there was a lot of comedy, but the new ones they always have the best comedy. I don't know what they make. They make it so much more funnier, and you know, just I mean, one of the things that happened in Forest Awakens was the death of Han Solo. Like, no one's that coming. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah. oh really? No, you can't do that. No, you can't kill him off. Come on. Yeah, that's that, that, on. You that, that's that's going to, and they that's just going to kill him off. Iconic for decades. Like, like everyone's going to be talking about it in like oh, yeah. thirty years. They're going to be like, oh yeah, remember the time that killed Han Solo? Get killed off for for one thing. Cause, like, well, one one of the things <laughs> that I really enjoyed about that um, as well, um, because I mean, you know, the whole reason why they have the card night scene, right? And uh, in five, the entire reason for it, yeah, because they might have killed him off, because like, he, he might not have returned. Well, that's why. Yeah. Well, what was happening was um, Harrison Ford. He was kind of getting well, kind of tired of the character. With the way that they were going about his um, his whole characterization, how they're making more of a goofball, he didn't like it. I mean, right. and he was the only one of the original three casts that only signed up for two films. Yeah. And so they had to write it in to the movie saying, like, okay, if he wants to right. come back, then he can. If he doesn't, we, we'll kill him off. Hence, they came up with Carbonite and freezing him and doing all that good jazz. Or most likely he will, most sense, likely yeah. he won't. Let's see what happens. Right, of course, yeah. um, but with that being said, though, before he, um, before they even talked about J.J. Abrams coming into the fold of a Star Wars director, before there was even an official thing, before yeah. Disney ever got mm-hmm. their claws on Star Wars whatsoever, Harrison Ford and J.J. Abrams, they knew each other. 
and they would sit yeah. down. They talked for a few years, actually. Mm-hmm. Of if you yeah. ever took the reins of the series, how would you kill off Han Solo in a fitting way that would appease the fans and be a good closing? And yeah, yeah. I learned that not long <laughs> after I saw the movie. Um, my dad and I were talking about it, and he was telling me the whole story. And frankly, to me, that was the most yeah. beautiful way that they could have done it. I wish that they had waited for it. Um, I've, I very much share Mark Definitely, Hamill's... Yeah. Mark Hamill, the, the reason why he didn't like the way that they did uh, the last Star Wars movie is because it killed off all the three main characters all at once, basically. Mm-hmm. And he really wanted to have a reunion yeah. of the trifecta. He wanted that so badly. And he said in interviews, I mean, you can watch them right now, where he wanted it so yeah. bad. And now, most likely, he will never work with Harrison Ford again on another project. Most likely because of how old they are. Nothing I mean, against yeah. him whatsoever, just yeah. their, their careers might not align. And he hated that. And frankly, so do I. So do a lot of other fans. Yeah, I the way that. Like um, I feel like it would have made a great climax in like the third movie or something, second or third movie. Oh yeah, to have him Han Solo die. Definitely. Like the first movie was a little oh, bit yeah. too soon, honestly. Well, not only that, but uh, I mean, admittedly, I hate seeing this as much as the next guy. But even even hardcore Star Wars <laughs> fans like me have to admit that they're just doing a rehash of the original trilogy, just like they did with well the prequels. I mean, they are literally doing a rehash. Mentor dies. The person's like, oh my god, what the hell do I do? Then, <laughs> then hey, you're the hero. Then, oh yeah. shit, it's about to hit the fan. Yes. That happens yep, yep. each and every trilogy. Mm-hmm. And so, in that regard, they're trying to kind of follow through the NLB uh, process. The, the prequel was different, actually. The prequels were, happened. yeah. The prequel was kind of showing, in a way, it was just showing a decline, while um, the um, original trilogy shows a rise, if you will. Like, the mm-hmm. prequel is about the descent into the Empire, and the other one is about the fall of yes, the Empire. Definitely. But each and every trilogy has its own... They all meet the same peaks and all meet the same lows, the exact same points in the film. Pretty much every single one. also following, like, classic exactly. storytelling structures. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I'm not yeah. saying that anything bad about it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that that's part, that's part of the reason as to why they were doing it for the film in the first place. Right. I don't okay. disagree with it whatsoever. I think that's the best way to tell the story, to be entirely honest. Because okay. that's how it's been I just missed the beginning part, I guess. Sorry. <laughs> well, nope. I didn't just say that part yet. But at the same oh. time, it, just, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't really... I wish that they had done it differently just because everyone wants to that closure for those characters. And I know that those actors did too. Carrie Fisher, she died a few months before they released the movie. It was the hardest thing that a lot yeah. of people saw. I mean, she passed away Literally, before they like, even I had to released accept- two. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was a joke. I'm like, oh, oh no way. And it was like, shit, that actually did yeah, happen. I thought oh, they were God, I was like, wait a second, what? Because I've I heard know. all those memes yeah. about, like, yeah, this person it. died in their sleep or something. Like, it was a mean thing. Yeah, but I thought, nice. but then I saw it actually happened. Like, I remember looking it up and just seeing, yeah. oh, she's officially dead. And seeing all the yeah, memes. I, I, when I read that, I cried. I yeah. cried. I called my dad. He and I... The tr- the tr- uh, trilogy of my childhood oh, are G.I. Joe, Star Wars, and Transformers. And when Carrie Fisher died, I called my dad up and he and I cried on the yeah. phone because of how integral that part was in my childhood and as well as his. I didn't cry, but I was kind of in disbelief. I was like, oh, come on. She can't I, I was in the same way. Exactly. Same here. Yeah. Yep, same here. It's kind of like with episode one, Darth Darth Maul, he had the cool lightsaber. The same thing happened with this trilogy. I mean, it's some footage of episode nine we'll talk about later. Doesn't every trilogy have cool lightsabers? Like, dude. <laughs> well, no, the specific one has the cool Hellblade lightsaber. This one has the cross saber, which is, I don't know. I don't hate it, but it's just like, it's really. I love it. Really, I don't even know why they made it, but at the same time, it's a cool weapon. It's it's badass. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, it's effective too. But Isn't that all that matters? But like, <laughs> ever. Have made. I mean, it's also damn dangerous. I mean, imagine wielding that thing. 
<laughs> like seriously, that's the. Um, but still, I, I think Kylo Ren is a very compelling villain. Um, I mean, he's not, he's not really a Sith, more like a. Just, I don't really think there's ever been. He's a whiny cranberry. I mean, he's what? The dark side. No, <laughs> not really. But uh, at the same time, I did a new character was a really powerful new addition to the team to, to the new Star Wars roster because she's a really fascinating character in her own way, especially the Force, which is very interesting. And then you you know see her connecting to the Luke's lightsaber, and you see you know cameos of of uh, voices of. Oh, I think we talked about this before. And I'll real quick mention it again for those who forgot. But um, a while back, we had a podcast talking about uh, before that particular, um, you know, I guess when Ray touches the lightsaber thing. And um, my original thought was that they had found a recording of Al Guinness saying Ray, but no, apparently, and according to Big Dana guy here, that you know, just him saying Ray from saying afraid, which is really interesting. And then also, Amy Gugger did come back to do a very, very short voice cameo as Dick. Uh, cameo. Yeah, so... But, uh, yeah, yeah just, <laughs> just a clarification there. So basically, yeah, they... I don't know if it was afraid that they took her from, but basically they, they took Al, Al Guinness's um, voice acting and they kind of spliced it to, together to make him say Ray. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and um, Ian McGregor also came back for that part and was like, yeah. okay, let's add in have you say Ray, and they kind of spliced it together, and that's how I got the end oh, result. So they combined the young and the old brother. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they, they got it from recordings of Al yeah. Guinness before he died. Um, like, from the actual movies. I, I believe he, yeah. it was when he said Afraid, but I don't remember exactly for certain. Um, uh, that's something that I need to look yeah. up again. Those of you who don't know what the line that um, Ibn Regers of the one said, it was the very, very end of the, of the vision. He says, these are your first steps. Very, very small voice role, but it was still a really cool. You had to really like listen closely to what it's saying because sometimes it's really hard to catch. Huh, that's really interesting. It's a really cool thing, and it is. Yeah, it's really, really an amazing thing that they did with, for uh, the new episode. But uh, you know, especially since going back to episode four a lot, but at the same time sets up for you know this whole new story with like Snoke, who's a very compelling. <laughs> thing that I found out when uh, episode 8 was really getting to release. Because people were trying to figure out who Snoke was. <laughs> and here's a joke. I've seen some it really happened. funny uh, I've seen Facebook. It was like, the truth of you, Snoke confirmed. Here it is. And it just says Snoke, Andy Serkis. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've seen some joke. really like, funny yeah, we know uh, he's playing. Serious. <laughs> it's like, we, we know Andy Serkis plays Snoke. No, like, we know he's playing so we get it. And it became a joke. It's like, oh my god, really? Snoke is woke. Like, no. It was just a really funny joke. Um, I have to ask. Yeah, I really. I have to ask, I have to ask a question. Think, actually, yeah. What, how do y'all feel about Snoke being. Okay, the go new, ahead. About Palpatine being alive in this new one? I mean, in episode what was that? Nine, rumor has it that Palpatine is alive in episode what was that? nine. I <laughs> I have a few words on that. I I'll right. let you guys speak first, then I'll then I'll go on a little tirade. Let me tell you right now, I'm actually I'm kind of into that. Hurt. Uh, just do it now because that's an episode nine. I, I, I'm should we talk about later or just do it? Just you know, last by real quick. Let him die already. <laughs> Well, let the old man die. Well, real quick, if you want to real quick talk about that now. Yeah, let's talk about it now since we're on the topic. So basically, here's my little tirade on it. I actually kind of dig the idea. Yeah, I dig the idea, but but he damn well better not be alive. Alive is too far for me. What I think that they could very easily do is do like a whole kind of um. A force <laughs> ghost thing because in the expanded material, as well as in in like proven canon, for example, um, I forget the exact um, the exact episode, but near the ending of the original Star Wars: The Clone Wars series, Yoda goes to um, not Mustafar. What the hell is the name of the planet? Um, Dagobah. The Sith. 
Uh, no, the Sith planet. Uh, and meets Darth Bane, and basically it's a force no, ghost of, of oh, him. Dathomir. Oh. It's Dathomir. No, no, that Dathomir. No, that's not. No. That's not it. Dathomir is the one with the witches. That's the Saj Ventress. I'm talking oh. about the one with the Sith, the Sith acolytes and all the good stuff oh, in the original Korriban? series. Is it Korriban? Yeah, Korriban. Yeah, Korriban. <laughs> so, but basically, basically what they have oh, yeah, in right, established right, lore right. is okay. they have yeah. the equivalent of force ghosts for Sith. Um, and as well as in the expanded material, I mean, some Sith have become Force Ghosts, and by different means, like entirely, oh, I, I mean, entirely different means. I mean, there is a game that I have on my Xbox. I forget the name of it, actually. It's, um, it's, um, I believe it's um, Jedi Academy, actually. Yeah, Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy. Oh, and basically, what happens is you fight a, you fight a big old giant Sith that inhabits other people's body, like it literally possesses them. It's a force ghost. I think Palpatine just fucking I, undated that shit and <laughs> tied his soul to something. Mm. That's kind of that's kind of what I, I think I feel like happened. But I I don't I, I don't think that well in the expanded material originally what happened was basically he cloned himself and <laughs> he repeatedly cloned himself and then launched his soul into each and every body and then over time it, it degraded his soul over and over and over. I hope they don't do that because I thought I thought that was a stupid concept. I think that if they let him be dead, like actually, hey, dead as a doornail in real life, like physical form, then hey, he, uh, him being killed by the chosen one and all that is going to keep it's going to maintain his integrity. Because if yeah. you just go and say, like, "Oh, he survived," yeah. then what the fuck was the whole Anakin Skywalker <laughs> thing about? Exactly, that just defeats the whole purpose of it. Also, I want to add on to the uh, Sith Force Ghost thing. The main difference between them and the Jedi Force Ghosts, from what I remember, is that the Sith were hell. Basically, they were the spirit spirits of like basically pure anger. They were tied as a result to the world, and in the end, it was it actually was really bad because they couldn't go anywhere. They couldn't move. They couldn't do anything they were tied to this object or place or whatever and they mm. were never allowed to go and be at peace which isn't even what they wanted in the first place but go off yeah yeah um yeah but yeah that uh we all know about the jedi force kids, but that's the main difference the oh yeah big time and and yeah I, as long as they keep it like that where basically he is officially dead I think they're going to have a really good story there. But if he comes back in anything more than a ghost, like a literal force ghost, or if he's anything more than recordings, I think that's going to defeat the purpose and they're going to shoot themselves even more in the foot. The way that the previous guy did handle episode eight, he did a shit job. That's true. He did a real shit job. He did not impress a lot of fans and he, did, mm -hmm. he pissed off royally, royally. Pissed off more oh, camera. Are you talking about the dark mall thing? No, I'm talking about um, episode eight. Oh, right. And the way that he handled like Carrie Fisher's character in it, the way yeah, that he handled Mark Hamill's it. character in it, he pissed off a lot of people. And right now, Disney has not impressed people at all. Yeah, like, at all with the way they're Star handling Star Wars. Wars. So, as long as they keep it in some capacity that's not like negating the entirety of what happened before, be then I think we'll be good to go. I'll be right back. Yeah. Sorry, how to be said. <laughs> well, well, we'll get to that later. Um, that's okay. Uh, really interesting things about, um, about, for example, Maz Katana is that she actually had a cameo in episode one. If you, oh, yeah, like she a was a statue. I, was that like a foreshadow? Did they, did they know that was going to happen? Hmm. I mean, that's like, it must be a coincidence because... Moza? Is in it um, room has a Maskutana or looks like Maskutana doll thing. And it's really, if they plan that or it's just a coincidence or it just happens to look like Maskutana, but like it's really interesting. Like I never think go, go all the way back to the uh, you know, the older trilogies. It's like, wow, there's a character we, we, we've, we've seen before. <laughs> Pretty much all I had to say about episode 7. I love the characters. I love everything about it. It was a, it was a great film. Just I, 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 happening between six and seven, it just didn't really make a lot of sense to me. Just because you know, I, I didn't read the novels or whatever. Um, 
didn't really. At the same time, it was really fun to um, come back and see the new, uh, you know, the the what the how how the galaxy has changed since then. And about episode seven, that I will say was a bit of a disappointment was having Luke have a cameo like they were just in episode seven. It's like it's just such a bummer. Like that movie was great, but they just made his it made Luke just like appear once. Like seriously, mm-hmm. uh, do did, did you have any? Did you have issues with that at all? We just Luke was like appearing for like a minute. <laughs> oh yeah, big time. <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah, Mark Hamill. Was... Mark Hamill has not been impressed with the way that Disney has been handling his character uh, since the acquisition did. He has not been impressed with seven or eight, and frankly, neither of the fans. I mean. Yeah, it, it's been fucking ridiculous, actually. My, my opinion is different. I've I've loved them, so it's we got we got to. Oh, be I'm not, I'm not saying the movies. Here. I um, I'm not uh, saying the movies have been my... horrible. I've really enjoyed. I've really enjoyed I it, know. actually. I want to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I've really enjoyed the the new movies for the most part, but they're yeah. they have yeah, that one. They yeah, have done some that, really bad aspects, that, though. That. Possibly, yeah. I mean, they they put some. <laughs> Interesting aspects in uh, in uh, episode seven. Um, I mean, I think that was that, that episode seven end thing was mainly just to have up for the next episode. But um, but when Han was talking about you know where Luke was, what Luke was up to between episode six and seven, and so there's there's what's happened to now since where where Luke has been going, and now he's wearing a beard and he's a Jedi Master and he's a has a whole new look. There you go. Back. It, it's definitely an interesting um idea about putting that plot point into the movie about like six and seven. Oh, there was a new best jet and then we get we get the answer in uh, episode eight um burned the whole thing down although in episode seven there's actually a scene from episode eight which is really interesting like i don't know if you caught that but in episode seven there's a in the trailer but it's actually a scene from the next episode from episode eight it's really interesting um <laughs> but still that's pretty much all i have did you guys have anything else to add? Anything else you liked about it? I'm good. Yeah, I think we pretty much got it. Anything else you liked about episode 7 that you were really impressed by? Nothing that I feel like hasn't been mentioned. Um, yeah. The special effects were rad. <laughs> they were. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Definitely. A lot of good throwbacks to episode 4 and just introduction to the, to the saga after years and years and years. I mean, especially, especially since it had been 10 years. Since the last episode, that's insane. Um, great way to, to really invigorate the series and bring, really bring it back. Just about what some people have to say about it. Um, I thought Ray was a really interesting character. I think she's she's been especially actually one more thing before I move on to episode eight was the scene. Well, I mean, obviously Kyle are going crazy. But first Jedi mind trick on Daniel Craig Stormtrooper. I didn't actually mm-hmm. didn't realize it was him because I I don't really watch all of the images for force abilities. He's like. You'll remove the strains and leave the cell with the door open. <laughs> that was awesome. I mm-hmm. love to like. She's like, hmm. Maybe I could do a mind trick. I mean, I, I feel like I'm force sensitive enough. Let me see if I can fool this guy. <laughs> like, um. But also, one of the real, real quick. I, I know I'm, I I still talking about episode seven, but one of the really cool um four was when Han was like, do do we do they have a does this ship have a have a trash compactor? And then that's based Phasma into the trash compactor. I'm pretty sure. I don't remember though. But uh, is that what happened? Yep. Nope. Before. It's been a while since I've watched actually. them all. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I just assume that's what happened. But yeah. <laughs> um, I really like the diversity they have, and uh, and just in general, it's it's a that was a really great way to start the news in the time gap. Didn't get it at all. But um. Still not a bad movie. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and move on to episode eight, the last Star Wars film. I have no reason to believe that there's anything wrong with this movie. It's so funny. I mean, I've only seen it once, mm. but I do remember. I, do, I remember a lot of it, and it's a fantastic film. Uh-huh. Okay, so uh-huh. 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 That- I disagree. <laughs> Sounds yeah. like you have opinions. <laughs> uh, just a wee bit, laddie. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, the way that they handled Leia in there was a fucking joke. I was actually insulted. Um, yeah. The way that they, that they handled her character. I 
No, seriously. The, the way that they handled um, Princess Leia in it, I was not impressed whatsoever. Um, I think that it, it, it was a fucking joke. It, it seriously was. Um, also, the way that they... Um, that makes you think... Just that one scene at the at the beginning where basically... The way they killed Akbar and everyone else, and all of a sudden, hey, she can survive in space. She's going to be floating to us now. What the fuck was yeah. that? And frankly, I was expecting her to die in some capacity. And that right there, if that was how she would have, well, died, honestly, I think that that, that would have been, well, I don't know. I just think that if they had let that happen, I think it would have been a little more fitting to the character. Because she was trying to save everyone. That's what she was trying to do. She was trying to save everyone when the, sh- when the deck exploded. Mm-hmm. And if they had let that happen, well, she would have passed away with some of the other great characters like Admiral Akbar. And like, like I already talked yeah, to you yeah. about beforehand, the way that Mark Hamill discussed his filming on set, he hated it. He hated the way that they treated his character. He hated the way that they yeah. killed him off, too. And frankly, it pissed off so many other fans as well. And not only that, but a lot of those different stylized choices that mm. um, that the director decided to take with this film, the whole cantle bite scene was... Okay, let's, let's be brutally honest. It had basically no re- real reason to be in there. Yes, moral reasons... Uh, I, I get it. Moral reasons, I understand why. But at the same time, story-wise, it did nothing more than just detract from everything else that we're trying to watch right now. And nothing wrong against the person that played Rose Tycho. The actress that played Rose Tycho did an amazing job for what she was given. She did oh, she a, was, a fucking amazing. fantastic job. And I, 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 don't, I don't hate her performance Definitely. whatsoever. Every single actor that was in this film, they gave amazing performances all around. Even the characters that I did not like. I did not like the character of Rose Tycho. Nothing against the actress. She did a fantastic job with the role that she was given. But the character had no reason to be in there. And it, it just... It was fun. It was more just a more of a disappointment uh, for a lot of the scenes. And I, I just didn't like it for the most part. But I will say this. It had... When it was good, yeah. it was fucking... <laughs> good. I love the scenes of the whole chasing yes. through the hyper- hyperspace. I really enjoyed that scene. Like, grand total. The fight scene at the very end of the movie between uh, Ray, Kylo Ren, and the Praetorian Guards was absolutely beautiful to watch. I loved that scene. I was on the edge of my seat the entire way through. I mean, it was it was great. It was great. And seeing yeah, Luke again exactly, yeah. in the movie, seeing him kind of taking the role of the Master was Absolutely stunning. And my mm-hmm. favorite scene of the whole movie, my absolute favorite scene of the whole fucking thing was seeing Luke and Yoda again. Seeing those two characters, I mean... Oh, yeah. That was seeing those two characters was magical oh for so many different fans. I mean, Luke, I mean, if if you watch some of the behind-the-scenes stuff, he was crying. Mark Hamill was crying when he saw Yoda again because it was just like back in the old days. It was exactly like it. Definitely, yeah. I can, so I can it's it. it's not by any yeah, means definitely. a terrible film. Um, I loved a lot of it, but the scenes that were bad were way too bad for my liking, and it was a disappointment for the majority of the time. Yeah, that's too bad. So. That's too bad. It really is too bad. I mean, it's, it's just an opinion, but um, I think what we were talking about with with the light does make sense if you really think about it, because in the first trailer for um, for the Force Awakens, Luke does mention that Esther has it. Everyone has it. So the, the fact that they did that in Episode Eight was, was, in my opinion, it might not apply to everyone here. Was that it's a very, I mean, yes, it's very unusual. And in the expanded material, Leia does become a Jedi, or as far as far as I know, um, but this means that she's really Force sensitive and she does have Force in her. And it's just the first time we're seeing it actually happen. Um, so I don't, I don't think that was a terrible idea, thing they did, but one thing about this movie that made it probably made it better than The Force Awakens, in my opinion, is the humor. 
<laughs> it was hilarious. I just could not believe what they, they did this to a Star Wars movie. It's like, just so unusual, but also... It, and I loved everything about it. I mean, I've only, I've only seen it once, but I do remember... I remember enough of it. I remember there was quite a bit a bit from it. Uh, the scene where Luke attacks Kylo Ren or Ben Solo at the time. That was incredible. I never... Especially seeing Luke... Luke's oh, what the hell happened? Like, and... One of the best scenes, although it did shock me later, I thought because I think everyone in the theater was, was like, oh my, projected himself to the first order and basically tried to fight his way, his, you know, fight, fight a whole troops or whatever. And like he said in the beginning of, of, of this movie, he's like, well, you think I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a laser sword and fight the whole first order kind of thing? And just seeing him like go up against them all and like, have them all blast him, and it's like, just like brush off dust, like I didn't do anything. And then, of course, turns out it was a projection all the time. And then he just, because it's, it's too much for him to handle, boom. He, he just, I was just like, oh my god. It's like the most surprising thing in a Star Wars film ever is Luke dying. I did not expect it. And a lot of people were upset about that. Like, oh, the fact that, like, well, how could they kill off the most beloved character in the Star Wars well it's Ryan Johnson's decision and it was something that, that it needed it to happen and you know I mean I know people are like oh why why did they, why did they come up because maybe the actor doesn't want to play the character anymore or they they just like it was their decision to just uh, move on you know it's uh, episode seven he, he wanted to he didn't want to play Han anymore he was tired of the character and I guess he just he, Wanted them off. That's basically how it is. So, um, I yeah, I, I didn't really have anything issues with it. I just felt like humor was really a uh, great part. I actually I remember in the theater, one of the funniest lines. I mean, I don't know. There's many of them, but one of the ones I remember was I think it was Poe Dameron getting getting put on hold by Hawk. So I was like, oh my god, that was amazing. Was one what? Do you remember that? So you probably seen it, but that was one of the ones that I remember seeing was. Like that was like it was the first the first in the Star Wars movie ever because there's just like nonstop jokes and everything. It's just like it was incredible. Um, I don't know, you guys. Do you guys have any uh, that that were like really really funny to you? There was one other scene that I didn't mention in there that I really enjoyed, and I gotta admit the the whole scene that they had on that um, salt planet, whatever it was called. I, I forget the name of it. Basically, the scene with the walkers and all that good stuff with the salts. And everything. You remember the one I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. I think I talked about that. Yeah. 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 I just talked about how Luke was just like he just like that. Oh yeah, I I funny. loved <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Just that whole scene. Not nothing to do with. Well, probably my favorite part of it was just the uh, the fight scene between him and Kylo Ren. I loved it on there, but that. The entire segment on that planet, I I greatly enjoyed it. Seeing the new walkers was fun, but um, my favorite scene of the whole movie definitely Kylo Ren, Ray versus Praetorian guards, hands down, best one ever. And my goodness, that reveal, like, because I know we're not gonna get more more information until like that comes out, but like just seeing Kylo Ren um talk about Ray and you know just uh that fact that she's that she's a nobody is just like. It really g- gives us suspicion about what, what she really is, like who she really is. Like, is she a Skywalker? I think he was lying. We're not gonna know until you think so. Yeah, he is a douche. I mean, That's what off. they do. He's a douche. He lies. Yeah, I think I guess that he so. has uh, done nothing but lies since we first met him. I don't think. I mean, why else would the sword even call to her? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I guess. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Then, um. But I definitely feel like killing off uh, Snoke was just a, like mm. it was like I'm not I'm like wow. I wish they had more like, Snoke. The most surprising thing I'm like oh my god, that was quick. He's a really good villain. I don't even know who he is, but he was a really interesting villain. And obviously that scene, to, it's the, obviously that's kind of the idea. It's supposed to like mirror episode six in a. In a pretty big way but at the same time um it was still a, i mean obviously like uh phasma's death scene that was like 
No one saw that coming. I mean, I didn't even know she was gonna if she was gonna laugh. She's a I think one thing that fascinates me. She's in a really interesting villain sort of. I guess like a because he's like she's a special really interesting kind of sub villain or whatever you call it. She's not she's not really a villain. She's like a a anti anti trilogy, and she's a really yeah. She's a villain. She's like the mini boss before the final boss. Mm-hmm. Well, she was really supposed to be the new Boba Fett in Episode Seven, kind of get but the guy with the baton became the new Boba Fett over her. So I don't know if she would have made a good Boba Fett. Yeah. I don't think or or like Boba the equivalent Fett. of where she's this whole mystical character. What's she gonna do? Oh my God! She had just as uh, much screen time. I was yeah, barely was- even in there. Extremely boring. However, apparently yeah. the uh, yeah, the the book about her, apparently the book that they wrote about her was supposed to be damn good. So good, yeah, that's very good. Um, so yeah, I think that on a uh, not episode on island thing with Lucas on, I can't remember the name of the, of the planet they were on. That was a the really planet to the porgs. A lot of throwbacks to the yeah, the porgs are really fun. They, they were just like they were so random. I mean, I think they were. Marked it a bit too much because oh, again yeah. the movie finished up at like September. December so show for three months and they released it. Wow, you know that's just, that's just sad. They may have marketed them too uh, so much, but I gotta tell you, when I saw Chewie roasting one of them and the other one's expression, that just made the whole thing worthwhile. <laughs> it really did. Right. I, I agree that? that they marketed them way too much. Sure. I think that they were kind of a waste of of a character space. But when I oh, yeah. saw Chewie roasting one of them for dinner, and the other poor looking up to him like his soul was crushed, I screamed tears of joy in my heart. Because <laughs> those were annoying little That's fuckers. Good, yeah, I suppose. Definitely. But yeah, they, they, I mean, in terms of, of a comedy, a lot of it was on, like, it's like, oh, this is the force, and it's like, oh, a leaf. It's like, you feel that? Yeah, feel that's that? the force. <laughs> <laughs> then whack! That was just like, oh, wow. Really? <laughs> but uh, I think the big, and like, the cave, I think the caves were really a crazy part about um, episode that 8. That cave was, was trippy. It didn't make a big sense, episode. but it was trippy. It just, you know, really call back to episode five a lot. You know, especially episode five, that cave season. It's just like wow. Five or episode seven, episode eight was a love letter to the original trilogy a lot. I mean, this whole trilogy has been, but like specifically, it's been love letter. Not just the original trilogy, but like especially when Luke talks about, he, he mentions Palpatine. That was a really cool Easter egg. Like, oh, I didn't mention something from the past. Like, that's really cool. And, and and having like Ray taking the books and learning from the mind, it's like yeah, a whole, a whole, a new, a whole, a whole generation lives inside it. Like, well, that's true because she's, she's like a, a new, new Jedi. So like, and the thing about, about what he meant was it was the last Jedi, the last current line of Jedi was was over, but not mm-hmm. the last Jedi in, gen- in general. Like that, a new line of Jedi would be would be begin with Ray. I'm guessing that's what that's what they're talking about. That current line of Jedi or whatever, and then Ray was like sort of a new one. I'm guessing that's what they meant, but it's not hundred percent sure that's a that's Well, my interpretation of it was like Is that what they meant? Base, my interpretation of the whole thing was basically where Luke is the last Jedi. Like he was the last one. Before the before everything fell, like he was the last Jedi, and Rey is not the same. Yeah, she is definitely not a Jedi. I don't think that she has the interpretation well, to be a Jedi. Sensitive. Well, yeah, she's force sensitive, but I think she's more going down the the gray yeah, yeah, yeah. Jedi code. Like that's what they had in there on on yeah. that um, on that planet when they were on, where she found Luke. He had the gray Jedi code, not Sith, not Jedi. Thus, Luke, last Jedi, Ray, becoming kind of a middle ground. I think that she's. I don't think that they're going to do the whole light and dark and that's it kind of thing. I hope they don't. Interesting. 
That's, that's, that's a, a really interesting way to think that Ray would be leading the new a new generation of Jedi, but at the same time, you don't know. Like I, I mean, yeah, you might be right. Yeah, I hope that they make her into more of a great but, Jedi thing, because I, I, I think that they if they're going to go, go ahead and continue with it, they need to have something different. As many people have issues with it, I don't know what the problem is, but. There were a lot of of things that they touched on, a lot of things that they could have explored. Um, there's, there's, there was so much they revealed with with this episode eight um, that the next one, because if the next one, the trailer for the next one really shows us anything. There's a lot that they can answer with episode eight. It was all like seven. Like there's a lot that they can work with with all the material they have. You know, especially with Ray learning about the Force and learning the ways of the force, even though it doesn't mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that she might be a Jedi, but at least it means that she is sensitive. And where he's not a Sith, but he's he's sensitive on the dark side of the force. Same kind of idea. So like, I feel like Rey and Kylo Ren are similar, or Sith, they're just like, they're on the path to the dark side, or the light side, but they're not, they're not officially, like, they're not, they're not, they might not like, be, 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 they're on that path. Like they think they might want to become a Jedi, but it might not work for them. But at the same time, they have, have what it takes. They can maybe they can pass the mantle of of Jedi to someone else or something like that. Maybe that's what they're going for because that's just I mean, especially when Asian people have like maybe the that Darth Vader might return, which I don't even know. Who knows if that's gonna happen? I just some rumors I've heard. But um, to go ahead and end episode eight and go on to episode nine speculation, if we're pretty good in episode eight, I, I mean we I think we already we already it was really need to be touched upon. Um, overall, I thought it was a really, really funny movie. I didn't really have anything against it. I've only seen it once. The best part so, was when they, the light speed jumped it was into the, great movie the bad actually. So, um, I, I don't remember much of that. It was, it was a lot of fun, actually. It was surprisingly fun, and I got to see a lot of familiar faces like Yoda, and just a lot of really funny moments, and just a really actually, great I haven't film. Seen. Um, you haven't seen episode 8 yet? Oh, okay. Okay, well... Spoiler alert! <laughs> I, I guess I guess even That's even more will spoil it for me. Warned. Okay. Well, anyway, um, well, it, is, it is on Netflix. You can go ahead and watch it. Um, maybe when you get the chance to. But um, episode nine. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're all good on, on uh, episode eight. Yeah. Pretty good movie. Um, so episode nine. We don't know much about, it, but we can we can do some speculation about about what we've seen in trailers. Um. With this one, I am actually looking forward to it more than in the other Star Wars movies. I'm actually really psyched for it because I think it's going to be a really great end to the Skywalker saga. Um, although originally, it was released in 2018. Kind of like with with the with both trilogies that were going to, because it's like a three year apart gap in terms of the releases. They're going to be 2015, 28, 21. That was what their plan was, but I guess it changed. Um, but I guess in the not modern day cinema, in two years, this movie is going to be awesome. It, there's going to be so much we're going to get information on. I know we don't know much about it, but I think Palpatine is going to be the main villain. I don't know how he's going to come back. I, have no I mean, I guess that makes no sense. No way or another. No. Maybe his, maybe his conscience or something like that, or I don't know what's going to happen. Because he fell down at the end of the episode six, he fell over. He, he better not be back and alive. If he's, like, he's at Force Ghost thing, I'll be okay with it. <laughs> well, they, they said that he'd be back in back. So think of like Tony Stark on the comics, where he, come, he came back as like a hologram kind of thing or consciousness. That think about that. You know, he Force Ghost, but like just some a version of him or something like that. I don't know. I can't tell yet, but I, I'm just gonna say that's what I think is gonna happen. Uh, one of the, I mean, there's a lot of, but before the movie trailer came out for this. Final episode. Um, there was a lot of speculation about what the movie would be called. The Vendetta Protocol was another one of them. That made no sense at all. The Rise of Skywalker actually makes a lot of sense, but at the same time, I don't know what. Like, they have to have a reason for it. I mean, it's like the Rise of Skywalker. Does that mean that the Skywalker line is it dead? Maybe that. Well, regardless, it's not uh, dead. I mean, you got Kylo Ren. He's still <laughs> technically a Skywalker. Not, True. Well, reports that I've been saying, people are saying that he's not officially a Skywalker, because once Leia married Han, she was no longer... Okay, her. no, that's actually I, bullshit. I wouldn't, I wouldn't he take might, it seriously, but... He might not be <laughs> a Skywalker by yeah. name, but frankly, 
my my name, my namesake. Blood. I don't I don't share the same name as my grandparents, but I'm still part of that family. So he's still technically a Skywalker. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, true. I guess. I mean, some some people are probably like being just not even get, get you know looking at the at, at the for these uh, answers. But at the same time, while we can speculate as much as we want about this film, we don't know everything about it. Um, I don't know that real is is a uh, raised parentage, and someone will point out that they're gonna they're gonna finally answer where she came from and who she is. Like, she you know here and everything like that, and she. You know, what, what's gonna become? What's gonna become of the Jedi? Like apparently, the the plot of Episode Nine, something to do with with the ending the the uh, the war between the Sith and, Je- and the Jedi. I don't know if that's actually gonna happen, but that's like the that's like a, a plot leak or something like that. Like the potential plot could happen, something like that. I'm not sure exactly. Um, one of the characters that I'm looking forward to come, seeing come back because I've been, I have, I was just like, so I got others going yes, and that is Lando Calrissian. Yes. Oh yeah, it's just, it's I'm looking forward to that. Oh yeah, I think it's a big great. And it, plus, like, I think people are giving. People are stop. People are stop watching Star Wars, even the movies, because of the fact that Disney's quote screwed it up. I don't care what they say. I'm a I'm a Disney nerd, so I don't really care what they say. I'm just gonna watch it regardless. But um, at the same time, that's just what I, I think. The, the, and the Lando's back is a really great way to end the saga on a really high note and uh, give fans what they deserve. Hesh, returning to the director's chair after episode 7, I think people are going to give it a chance because he's come back. Because they hated it and it was better for them, so they're probably going to like it more now that episode 9 is with J.J. Abrams. I don't know exactly. Um, but aside from them surprising his role as Lando, one of the, I, one, I hate the one to... Care, the one care, I hate okay. to kind of be the elephant in the room here, but I gotta ask, what the hell are they going to do with Carrie Fisher? How are they going to kill her off in this? Because she's... Okay, that I, was I'm was very curious. About. If they that do was, it off-screen, uh, yeah, I'm going to be so pissed. Sure. That makes sense. Sure. Because, like, because I'm probably going to cry at that one. Same. Well, one of the other I'm, things... I'm, though, I was like, oh my god. Like, I, I think that if they are going to, they need to have extra stuff. Because basically what they did for episode uh, uh, for for yeah. episode 9 that they talked about was all the other information that they... Or not... I'm sorry. Losing my train of thought here. All the other footage that they are using in episode 9 has been pre-recorded stuff that she did in, in filming episode 7 and 8. It's already been recorded. Yep. Um, but one of the things that... Yep. That what they're doing now is they're taking actors like basically the same thing that they did with uh, Grand Moff Tarkin. They're doing the exact same thing uh, with other actors right now. Um, mm-hmm. I think that most likely they're probably going to go ahead and do that with her yeah. for extra scenes in, in order to showcase her her death scene. But yeah, they better yeah they, they better showcase it and not do something off screen death or anything too violent. They gotta give her a fitting end. For that character, or else they're going to have a riot. Yeah, uh, here, here's a theory. Here's that something it has to do with something. Maybe she like got trapped somewhere in some footage they had where they, she got trapped somewhere, and and then they did make it. I don't know if that's going to happen. I'm just trying to figure out what other ways they could kill her off because they're going to have to do it. Um, I mean, it's lucky that they actually they can use an an ability about the story they have given, but I've also heard reports that. Um, Lucasfilm was lying about some of the, that, um, not using CGI. I don't know if this is true. I don't even know where I read about it somewhere, but again, it might not be true at all. I'm just, I'm just looking like, oh, yeah, if that's true or not. Um, apparently, because I think J.J. Abrams said they were not going to use CGI at all for Leia, um, and we're not going to, they were not, they were going to go ahead and not, uh, do that. They were going to, Use her daughter as is there a play CGI to recreate her? Honestly, I think it's bullshit. I mean, that's just ridiculous. They shouldn't do that. But I mean, that's why. I, well, I heard, not I heard one of by that song. I just saw that. I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I think that if her, her if her daughter can play the character, then I'm then I'm okay with it. But 
I do hope that they do a little bit of CGI there, just to make her yeah. look like her. Because if it's her that's actually behind the character, I will be more than happy to see whatever that they need to. I will be more than happy to. As long as they have some of that role well, yeah, they want to do the, next the original role, I am fine with having to do a CGI. But they got to respect the role damn well. Yeah, I mean, especially if they promised they wouldn't use it, and then they said, we're going to use a little bit of it, but, I mean, they're not going to use I mean, if they use CGI, it probably wouldn't be for the entire um, appearance of her. Like, if they part where they have to use it, I could be understanding about it. But if they... Easily, if they just completely CGI'd her, that would just not be good. I mean, as long as it's someone that will respect the role, like his daughter, I'm fine with it. Might as well use it and use it and work around the story they've written. Especially if they, I mean, using the footage that they found that was deleted, that I mean, was obviously they recovered, and then put it into the story. They, I guess we'll have to wait and see when December comes. Um, and it's gonna be a really exciting film. I'm really looking forward. I don't know, um, in terms of the story, I don't know what it's going to be about. I don't know how they're going to end the saga. I think it's going to be very exciting. It's going to do with Palpatine. Although one thing, how he's going to come back is Luke. He's obviously coming back, and it's pretty much confirmed at this point as a ghost. <laughs> I think everyone knew that already. already. I think he's I think he's been yeah, confirmed yeah. to say, I think Mark Hamill came out and said, yeah, I'll be returning as a ghost. I'm pretty sure that's what he said. <laughs> um, I mean, I think everyone knew that coming, but... Uh, at the same time, I am looking forward to this movie. It's going to be fantastic. I think they're going to rebuild a, a nine-film saga. Um, and it's going to be really emotional, especially with oh, Leia yeah. footage in there. It, it's going to be... They can shoot scenes with her footage and then shoot scenes where she's interacting with, with, uh, with someone with new with the shot footage. That'll be interesting. All the footage meets new footage. Like, that will be really interesting to see how that plays out. And that's why I'm trying to figure out what that's going to look like, because I don't know. I mean, what we've seen so far, I'm looking forward to seeing how they pull it up, because if they're able to do it, then they, they can tell a really good story, honestly. Especially since her, her like, when, they, when, when, she, when she passed away, it's like, oh, no, how they're going to put it in the next episode. It's like, I have to figure out something. I think it's going to be great. Um, so that's pretty much all I had to say about Episode nine that I can think of. I don't really know much about. It. Um, I hope that Kylo Ren redeems himself. Apparently, there's people are speculating about you know, the fact that he's gonna have to redeem himself. Like he had a lot of problems in the in the other films that he the people are wanting him to redeem himself for, like things that he mm -hmm. a lot of problems he had in such a good character that, that he wants to come back as a better person than he was. I don't know if that's gonna be able to do, but uh, I know I know they mentioned Jedi in the Jedi in the movie, except. Ghost Luke, right? <laughs> like, there's no Jedi, so like, how are they gonna do that? I don't know what that means. It just means that like, there's no problems like that. That's my guess. Anyway, um, I'm gonna have to get going here pretty soon. Yeah, same. I place to um, wrap up here actually, um, because like, we can't really do any more than speculate about this movie. But at the same time, I'm looking for the movie. Definitely, I'm looking for it's gonna be a I'm great film. Good. good way to wrap up the saga and. Uh, I think they deserve to, to go out and, uh, or whatever you call it. Um, and they did a good job with it. They've done a really good job with, with uh, these films, making them really, really good, and just making Star Wars good again. I hate it, so. Um, and, yeah, and as for continuing with more Star Wars topics, um, probably I'm right now, unfortunately. We, we, I mean, all I had planned was the was talking about um, the sequel trilogy, and maybe we can talk about the game, but I don't think we're going to have to. Time this week. The episode before the end of this podcast, we will probably we could probably do one more Star Wars themed episode, talk about the games, and then talk about other stuff we want to. But we'll cross our road when we get to it. Other anyway. Star Wars related stuff we want to talk about. Yeah, definitely, right. definitely. We, I don't know. Would you guys be up for one last standalone Star Wars podcast? Mm, I'm down. Fuck yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we could do one more. I know I said we, this is the last one, but um, I don't Who know. Who the hell do, cares? Think, it's Star Wars. Uh, podcast that we can so, exactly exactly so um but unfortunately that is all the time we have for this episode, star wars episode this podcast um I'll, I'll i'll get details about what i mean by that later on um in another episode but um okay, i'm really glad we finished the, the trilogy out um it's been great so um last but not least is there anything else you'd like to talk about for this sequel else you'd like to speculate no i just hope that they do a Basically, J.J. Abrams, if you were ever listening to this video, don't 
cock it up. <laughs> as long as you do that, we'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah you, a lot, he, there's a lot they can do with it in the current saga. Now, this, this is nothing Star Wars related, but I gotta say it. I'm Right now I'm playing Skyrim, and there was a flying mammoth. Yeah. There's literally a mammoth just hovering in the air. <laughs> what right. the fuck is with the flying mammoths? Just a mammoth in there? <laughs> just a mammoth floating up there. Oh I'm just like, goodness. what is that? A dragon? <laughs> what? Like trying to sleep? What? Oh my god, it's a mammoth. <laughs> wow, that's funny. It's all, it's ready mammoths run for your lives. We're all gonna die. Okay. <laughs> the mammoths anyway, coming for your soul. So, uh, for listening to this episode of The Madhouse. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, and if you didn't, well, button. fuck you, okay? And if you're new to this channel, subscribe for more episodes. Hit that notification of button. Series that Don't I do, forget to subscribe. Also, make sure you subscribe to my other channel, my, my uh, random channel. It'll be really fun, actually. Also, make sure you don't forget to subscribe to Big Donna Guy. He's a pretty cool dude. Uh, we will be back next time with another episode. All right. Toodles.